you guys got short bios, you guys got a Spotify pitch you want me to look at, let's throw those in the chat. For those not looking in the chat, it says, I am Lefris, a tech base and house artist that merges aforementioned genres with urban styles. Okay, so the first thing we have to remember is the word superfluous, and I think we've had a joke about this in the stream before, we've had a joke about this in my last book. When you are writing anything, and same thing for songwriting, anything, you wanna be as understated as possible almost all the time and as concise. Now for those of you, concise isn't a word you have to use every day. When you work in media, your bosses say this word to you every, no really, every fucking day. Uh, concise means as short as you possibly can go. So first off, I am Lefris. All right, if they're on your Spotify page, they're reading your pitch, they already know you're Lefris. They saw that already. So we don't need that. Now saying a tech and bass house artist that merges the aforementioned genres with urban styles. Now here's the second thing. You're largely talking to morons. Saying aforementioned, mm, well, check out the big brain on you, Lefris. So what we would switch that around to is instead, we'd want to incorporate saying that you're, it's good to mention that you're tech and bass house because that gets into micro genres. Micro genres are very important for people to understand because the people who understand what those words mean, they're going to be excited by that because they're looking for that. The key is that you want to mention that in a way that gets people excited. Now, as we've talked about in the previous videos on pitching your music, you really need to be thinking about how this sounds exciting. So I would keep the tech and bass house artist in there, but you want to say why that's exciting. So you know, you're talking about that with urban styles. Urban styles is the opposite of that. I'm going to be honest with you. I listen to that type of music. I don't quite know what urban styles is. You need to be a little bit more specific. Unlike like where I'm saying concise and talking about being superfluous, a big, big thing here also is you have to be detailed when you know how to be. And this is the part that drives us crazy and doesn't make this easy, which is why I have to do something like this. My latest single with Moxie, One Bad Bitch featuring, was released under Barang Family. Okay, so... Yet again, I think we're being a little too general, like no one would really get this. It's not getting us excited. I mean, it's one thing if Barong Family is a big label and I just don't know that. The release received strong support from Yellow Claw, Dylan Francis, for anyway. Okay, well, that's really cool. So here's the thing. You have some good cosigns in there, obviously. This might be your pitch to get people excited. Maybe something like starting this thing with Yellow Claw, Dylan Francis, and Freddie Legrand are all talking about Lefris's tech and bass house and then get into that urban thing and talk about the comparison, find a compelling way to describe that to people. That's a good lead because you know what? Like, who doesn't know who Dylan Francis is? My mother's probably driven by a billboard of him playing in a casino before and she'd be like, oh, that handsome fellow. Let's lead with that. That's strong. And, you know, I so I see you saying, I know it's long, but I actually don't think that's long. That's a pretty good thing. I think just like in the media business, we have this saying called burying the lead. And what burying the lead means is, is the thing people would give a fuck about in your story when you put it like in paragraph seven, no one's getting to paragraph seven. You need that thing right up here, either in the headline or the sub one. We want to create curiosity and then get it here. You're not creating that curiosity you're burying that down too far and people have probably given up because this first part was boring. We want to get the exciting stuff up higher. Okay, Unheard Sirens Incorporated. Our bio. Do you ever feel like you don't belong in this world? Like you are out of place or out of time? Do you wake up and wonder, what am I doing here? How did I end up in this strange place? If so, you are likely a renegade. Unheard Sirens Incorporated is the duo of Remy Renegade and the Empress Al. Two interdimensional travelers who create pop music from an alternate universe. Synth-soaked anthems for anyone who feels out of sync with reality. They're on a mission to unite with other renegades of the portal. Travelers from other dimensions looking for a place. Aliens searching for a home. Disappointed idealists tired of feeling powerless in our dystopian existence. Anyone desperate for a future. Okay, I will tell you straight up, this is fucking great. So what I love about this is there's this saying I really like a lot that Josh Topolsky, who like started The Verge, he's this really good tech editor. I think he's most famous for, if you've seen the footage of when Elon Musk first talked about simulation theory and then made that a thing that everybody thinks about, Josh Topolsky is who actually asked him about simulation theory and if he believes in it. Josh has this great saying that I think about all the time for musicians, that the worst thing you could do is trying to be for everybody. You should be for a specific set of somebodies 
but really create for yourself first, but don't try to be appealing to everybody. And so his saying is, it's something like, it's not for them, it's for you. What I love about this is this says to somebody, either this is for you or it's not for you. The one thing I think we're missing is a compelling way of saying what the music actually sounds like. We've said it who it's for really, really well, like ball out of the park, A plus, grand slam dog. But we haven't found that way that I would also be excited to hear what it sounds like. If you can find how to get that pop music from an alternate universe, since soaked anthems for anyone feels out of sight, I think we need like a hair more of for the moron who's reading this, which we got to appeal to morons, letting them learn who this is for. I don't got many more notes on that. Very well done. Question mark says, from the ashes, the three piece Newcastle based supergroup well have hit back hard in 2022 as a five piece power prog quintet rallying against the placidness of the established Australian music Wells hardcore roots are not a far cry from knowledge that was once deeply embedded in the Australian pub scene the chaotic furious energy which now reencapsulated much of Gen X whilst lessons from bands like Midnight Oil Rush and Dead Guy are present wow that's a really weird combo you know Dead Guy I used to see them in clubs to like 13 people. They were pretty sick shows. Fixation on the Coworkers, one of the greatest records of all time. Anyway, our present, the passion for jazz and fusion have inc has increased. Wells' willingness to push the musical frontier and liven the human spirit to achieve something great musically while still attacking with that same furrier and passion. I'm going to be honest with you, that reads like furrier and somebody's going to think you're a furry chief. And then, you know, you don't want that these days on the internet. Those furries are under attack. Anywho. You can't say you're a super group unless you identify the people and why they should know them. If you say that, it's a bluff. No one buys it. So that's our first problem with this. Our next problem and lesson to learn is the most exciting thing about you, unless you like live on the, I'm not even going to say like, because I think, keep thinking of that. What's that group? Like wet leg is from the Isle of Man or like, but like, here's the thing. Unless you're from the fucking Galapagos Islands and you just like hang out with like whatever weird creatures are there all day. No one is going to find it exciting that you're from this place. And that's definitely not your lead anytime. You can say where you're from. It does help contextualize you. But if you're doing that at the top, you're losing this battle. So what I would try to do, and I think a lot of this is pretty good. There's some really odd grammar being used in here. Like the while still being capitalized like feels really bad and that will turn some people off. You definitely want to have somebody. This goes for everybody. I am not great with grammar, but... What I will tell you is that the people who can read grammar well, they get really turned off when your grammar is bad. And this is a place where you enlist your smart friend who understands how to do that stuff so that you're not mocked and laughed at. I would be trying to rewrite this in a way where, yes, like the grammar is a little bit be better, but like I like the comparisons a lot. One of the things I talk about a lot with these bios is, is that you want to inspire curiosity with people. I know who Midnight Oil, Rush, and Dead Guy are very well. I wish I didn't know who Rush was. I fucking hate them. That makes me be like, huh, I don't know what that would sound like. And if that was more appealing to me, I would be curious what you did and I'd want to click play. But I'd get that up in the top. I'd try to like, instead of super group being like trying to get people a little more excited about your musical prowess, or if you are indeed a super group, you got to list who the people are and which band you've been in. Okay, I think you did pretty damn good there, though. Also, guys, these aren't that long of bios. I gotta say, a long bio is like the five paragraph, but really, like, under five sentences is your short bio. Like, that's good for Spotify. Geranium Drive. On their new track, Gotcha, ATX rockers Geranium Drive capture the sounds of the shaded psychedelia underground and shed a glimmer of subtle creeping light. The track opens with a long delicately punchy piano melody as a western tinged guitar coasts doing a steady drum to create a synthly dazed soundscape. I've seen the last lights. Lead singer Autumn Furtak howls over a dusted Tarantino-esque guitar riff, adding the perfect dash of 60s-inspired psych rock, a melange of jangling guitars, unabashed homage, and finely tuned pop reprieve. Gotcha finds Geranium Drive at their most daring, downright finest. This sounds like Actually, here, Geranium Drive, I know you, you're usually active in the chat. Is this a bio or a Spotify pitch? Okay, if this is a pitch for your latest track. Uh, so first off, they always know what the song's name is, so we don't need to do this. Let me give you a good formula for a Spotify pitch in general, because I think that we've overdone what you need to do here. So if they're reading a Spotify pitch, they're listening to the song. So you don't 
gotta do that much of like describing the song as like much as creating curiosity or giving details about why they should care and why this is exceptional. So cosigns are always great. Things you're going to promote with always great. Saying that thing that gets people excited about you and what makes you unique. Great. Here's a thing in writing, and this goes for bios and pitches. Never, ever, ever quote your own self about yourself because they know that's you reading it. So you've just wasted words. You only have 500 characters in a Spotify pitch. There's no sense in doing that. So what I would be trying to do here is, is like starting at the geranium drive, I would do gotcha captures the sound of the shaded psychedelia underground and a shed of glimmer, subtle creeping light. I think we could get that stronger and more curiosity driven. I'd really do that. Try to maybe find a good cosign or show something. Now, remember also for your Spotify pitches, what you should get in there. We talked about these playlist journeys. We're on chart metric playlist journeys. Remember this? I've taught you this before. This will tell you which playlists people were on before they get to the one that we're looking at now. So obviously chill hits pretty fucking big. You want to look at these smaller playlists and get in your pitch, which one you think you'd belong. That is a much greater indicator. And it also often, I believe gets that into the right Spotify playlist. So you want to be using chart metric, find the playlist journey you should be on and getting that in your pitch. Nice says mysteriously masked Aster Zico uses the guise of not only to make sure their art is front and center. I like that as a pitch of why you're masked. I kind of, I think that's actually a very clever play there you did there. Hailing from Puerto Rico and growing up on rock, punk, and hip hop influences, they look to use those roots to bring a new burst of high energy onto the Latin scene. Okay, I actually really like this for a short bio in some ways, but here's the problem. Yet again, hardest thing of all this is knowing when to be broad versus specific. I love punk music. I love hip hop music, but I sure hate a lot of it too and don't want to hear a lot of it. Being more specific with what you sound like and figuring out how to say what you sound like is up to making great songs one of the most important things you can do with your time. This is way too broad. Other than that, I really like the way you played that. Fake It is next. Fake It is a vessel for songwriter Christian Burnett to sort through the political, religious, and personal frustration that accompanies becoming an adult. Normal... I would really not love starting with the songwriter's name and doing that. Well, well done. Following his departure from organized religion, Burnett turned to music to find steady footing in an increasingly turbulent world. The band merges indie rock, emo, and hardcore with Burnett's lyrics exploring identity, grief, and introspection. Fake its most recent release, The Family Name, on Sunday Drive Records, is currently available via all stirring sources. Okay, here's the, our first lesson. That last sentence does nothing for nobody. Instead, we should say why somebody should be excited about the family name. Everybody knows that unless you're being some obscure fucking little dweeb who likes to uh, let me post it on SoundCloud. All music's on all streaming sites. That no one needs to say it. Say something exciting about the record. Say something that. So yet again, though, I think that you have a very strong lead here. What I really like is yet again, it's not for everybody. It's for you. That's the way to say the saying. Now I remember. It's not for everybody. It's for you. You're doing that very well in telling people who the music is for, but yet again, much like one of these critiques, we're being too broad. We're not actually creating curiosity. We want to then say something that makes people like, oh, what would that sound like? And do that yet again. Also, people, the number one thing of this gets you peaked when we're done. Watch my video that I made a few months ago on how to write a pitch that's exciting for people. Like that's got the gold in there. Otherwise, pretty damn good. Fear to stop. This was our Spotify pitch for our upcoming release. I assume this was supposed to be the next word. We were aiming for Smile Era Beach Boys meets Tame and Paula Vive. I built this track with my own quadruple track wordless harmonies recorded in an empty closet for natural reverb and a simple drum and keyboard backing. We promoted it by releasing the demo version as a B-side and so this right our number third most popular song. Song just slot nicely on the Fresh Finds experimental playlist, although I admit to some bias. Enjoy. Okay, I think you got some a lot of good stuff in here. So here's my main critique. I'm shocked this one hasn't come up faster. Detailing the process is really fun for us nerds. You know, I love to hear about your empty closet, things like that. But these Spotify playlist pitch people, it's not that. You want to create curiosity. You want to create excitement. Even saying this is our third most popular, just going to go here. I lie all the fucking time in these pitches, straight up. I say I'm going to promote it more than the band's going to promote it. I fucking lie all the time. We're going to do a music video. We got a big PR push, all the things. Make people feel like you're not just throwing things out in the world. Our third most popular song, kind of mids, kind of mids. 
So what I would be a lot more concerned with is like, let's get people more excited. I think you're doing really well. Like I will tell you straight up, even saying we're aiming for, it's not very confident. Smile era Beach Boys meets modern day Tame Impala vibes. Dude, that's fucking sick. Like, honestly, I'd hit play on that. I mean, that's my shit. I feel like we're not getting enough confidence and excitement in this, but like, I love the description of what you're doing. And I love the last thing that you're talking to the playlist. Green Main Spotify bios next. Artists from the 248 area of Michigan. Green Main started to rap and create music at the end of 2018 and has a variety of rap and hip hop vibes with a wide range of influences from the sounds of old school to today. Okay. So here's an interesting one I don't think I've ever even covered in a video. One of my good friends called me one night and he was like fucking freaking out. We had made a record together. I love this guy more than like I love pretty much anything. Like he calls me, he says, I want a beer. I could be as exhausted as I am today. I'm getting a beer with him. I fucking love this guy. But he called me one time and he's like, yo, I've put out, let's say four or five full lengths. I got the strongest material in my life. Everybody's telling me it might be better if I come in fresh and do a new name and just start over. My new sound sounds totally different. I got the best material of my life. What do you think of that? And I have to tell you, I fucking agree. And I didn't think I was going to agree when he first started the proposition. Saying you've been doing it since 2018 is one of the most boring things you can say because it's also saying, hey, for four years, no one's cared. There's this weird thing we have today. Everybody wants everyone to pay their dues and have been working hard. But we also don't want to fucking hear about it until after we've heard some good music. When you discover a great song, you want to hear that this person worked really hard on it. But before we hear it, we literally don't want to know. We want to imagine that, you know, the flying spaghetti monster, whoever your God is, has blessed you some talent. And all of a sudden we are here to hear the greatest talent, the Aliens beamed you down, and now we're going to hear your great songs. No one ever needs to hear how long you've been doing it for. Total waste of things. Now, yet again, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record here. Location, not so important. Definitely rap and hip-hop vibes, way too broad. We got to get more specific. Um, and you're not saying anything to get me excited or curious to listen to you. You got to, yet again, that video I just talked about, got to go back, watch that, rethink this thing. Okay. Sahil says, Spotify editorial pitch for a collab with my Discord homie, Nyuk. Love that. This heart-wrenching, emotional hyper-pop ballad is kicked off with R&B-type falsetto over raw acoustic guitar, contrasted with Nyuk's passionate performance on the hook on top of a driving bass-heavy beat, pieces about having your life shattered from a breakup but not wanting to hurt the person back. Nyuk and I met on Discord while he lives in Germany and went back and forth making the song in pieces. I think this would be a standout track on your hyper-pop or cellophane playlists. Uh, with the heart at the end. I kind of like the heart at the end. That's that's a fucking power move, donk. I like the frank language in here. You know, there's this very big thing also with these pitches is that sometimes people try to talk too formal, but almost talking like you're talking to somebody who you met at a show in the pitch is way better. Like way, way, way better. You know, particularly like even knowing like when you're in like, let's say your aspirational playlist is like pollen or something and like knowing how to talk about pronoun and things like that. All the cultural hints go very far. I really like this. The one thing is I think we spent too much telling what the sound is instead of creating curiosity to hear it. If we could frame all of that in a way that's creating curiosity more, I think you'd be in a really solid place. The rest of that's really good. I love the story about the Discord. People love to hear that shit these days. It's fucking great. Yeah, other than that, I think you're you're in solid territory. Okay, Louvs, a Berlin-based producer with Mexican roots dedicated to create the most exquisite sodic cocktails. Naturally, these sodic elixirs have 80s pop and disco-infused toads with tropical harmonies and Latin-inspired polyrhythmic beats. All right, here's my hot take here. Berlin-based with Mexican roots, interesting. Let's talk about how that affects your music and draw a more evocative picture from that. Yeah, I got a good story, but we're just basically saying it in the boringest way possible. I'd find 20 ways of how you could contrast what Berlin is different from Mexico, try to mix that all up and make it into a compelling story that's like, I'm going to be honest with you, this sound, th this isn't even like draft one to me. This would be like, you wrote this down, then you're like, all right, now that that's on paper, I can start writing drafts. 
I think you need to go a little deeper here. I think what's nice for you, and, and I'm really glad, but it's also because I have the uh, the best smart community on here. So far, so many of you guys got good canvases to work with. You guys got unique things. The biggest problem so many people have uh, is that there's nothing to work with because there's no depth. There are, you got a great story there. You're just not writing the story yet and making it exciting yet. Jamina Joel says, Jamina Joel is a neo-soul R&B singer, songwriter, and visual artist from New Orleans, Louisiana. Joel Joel has a unique expression of singing and painting together with musical influences from Erica Badu, D'Angelo, Nicole C. Mullen, and Ari Lennox. Joel creates a soulful, earthy, and ethereal musical sound. She is raw and perfect with her lyrics and romanticizes personal experiences to create new music. Joel brings a unique oral and visual experience of art and music. I feel like we're saying too much of the same thing in different ways instead of creating uh, curiosity. So like, I'm gonna go through this real fast because I think there's some good lessons to learn Lessons to learn here. So Neil Soul R&B singer songwriter. I actually like, like that because we bring it down to a, a specific micro genre that a lot of people do, but singer songwriter and visual artist. I'm like kind of torn because like, we don't get into like what the visual art and combination, like I'd almost want a picture of like, what does that look like? And why is that unique instead of like, this is yet again, like telling something, but not if that's really remarkable, tell us why it's remarkable that you're combining those two things. Here's another thing. Like when we talk about concise, no one who would find New Orleans interesting doesn't know it's in Louisiana. Just same thing. You never say New York, New York. Like there's no need for it. Superfluous. So Joel has a, a unique expression of singing and painting together. So yet again, we're not like painting the picture of what's unique about it. We're just saying the same thing we just said above twice. So th then the other thing I'd say is you're listing musical influences, but influences aren't as important as drawing the picture of what the sound is and creating curiosity. Yet again, going back to that video, I, I keep talking about watch that, try to learn from that on how you describe yourself instead of just listing off a bunch of things. This is the part I think is pretty damn good. She's raw and perfect with her lyrics and romanticizes personal experiences to create new music. If we made that like 20% more exciting, that's like good. That's bars. But Joel brings a unique oral and visual experience of art and music. We've now said that basically three times without painting a picture of what is exciting about. We're just saying you do it, not saying what's exciting about. But it sounds like yet again, you got a good canvas to draw from. Matt Clark is the spacey synth driven indie rock project of San Diego's most mercurial prodigal son. I'm going to admit, I don't think I've ever looked up what mercurially means. Of a person subject to sudden, unpredictable changes of mood or mind. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm feeling it. Let's keep going. The Delay Doused debut single, My Man Sid, paid a kaleidoscopic ode to Sid Barrett and proved that quirky pop hooks are part and parcel of Matt Clark's psych pop package. By taking the sound that churned out Manchester's factory records to interstellar heights with trippy warped grooves and influence from conceptual art rock artists in the same delicious vein as Pond and Parquet Quartz. Okay, so like you got some good good stuff in here to paint from. Similarly to the last one, I think we're saying the same thing a little bit over and over again. I'm assuming, oh, I'm missing the last part of this, huh? By using surrealist writing techniques for lyricism and sampled sonic textures as inspiration, the mind-melting propensities of Matt Clark's subconscious tapping sounds are no coincidence. We got your name in here three times in about six sentences. So here's another thing. Repeating the same words, repeating your name and not changing it, making it Matt's, Clark's, his, whatever it is, making it so that we're not doing that again. That is like getting rid of bad writing 101. Like past critiques, the first thing we're doing is we're being, we have a broad generalization into which city you're from. Not exciting. The more exciting thing, so I thought, thought like one, you know, it's cool you're writing a song about Sid Barrett, but I liked this, the taking the sound churn out of Manchester's factory records to interstellar heights with trippy war groups. That tells somebody, you know, if you know what factory records is, you're like, oh, that's my shit yet again. That's for me, not for everyone. So that gets exciting. I would almost then paint a picture of like, you could get rid of the Manchester, keep the factory records, and you could say, you know, factory records, what it was, Vin, what's his name, or like whoever you're like really interested by. Uh, but like getting a little bit more specific to that, you know, 
you could totally do those nods so that people know you know what you're talking about, you know, that no, Tony Wilson would appreciate something like that. But, like, let's get this boiled down. I like the Sid Barrett thing, all that, but, like, let's get that up at the top, get people excited that are like, this is for me, not for everyone. Julia Forte Music asks, isn't the I'm a Misunderstood Outsider is played? Here's a funny thing. It's played for tons of people, but when you're feel like one of those, when you're trench coat mafia, a lot of what music's about is identifying at times that are kind of corny. I identified, you know, last night I was in a bar and um, they were playing hair metal. I fucking hate hair metal. But boy, when I was 12, I loved hair metal and it felt like me. I had just discovered girls. I'm singing Girls, Girls, Girls by Motley Crue. And now I look back and I'm like, awful. A lot of the times we're talking to small niche audiences of people going through a certain thing at a certain time. And once we're over something, it's played. But when we're not over it, it's our lives and our emotions. Okay, Cliffy addresses a, 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 an interesting thing. A Spotify playlist editor told me he never even looks at the pitch paragraph until he hears the song, thinks it might match, but is a little on the fence. As in, you literally have to click through to see the pitch paragraph in their dashboard. That is absolutely correct. They can look through it first, but most of them are listening to the song and then reading what it's about, and it's because they have some openings that they're borderline about, and then this is why it's important to say something that makes them exciting. Say you're promoting the song is that that can be the decision-making thing that makes them go, okay, this is worth putting on. This person is going to do things for their music. I see Fear to Stop is saying that the, the confidence thing is something they struggle with. Yeah, we're all struggling with it. I totally feel you. I don't mean anything but helpfulness in this. I have to remind myself to be confident about things all the time, and I'm old like you. Chillin' 24 sev. Hell yeah, dog. Same. So Cal based Bixby Boys, cooking catchy and wistful Cali tunes about sci-fi flicks, playing out in real time, inspired by big baby blue Chevy convertibles and wildfires on Laguna Beach. Our energetic live shows are quickly becoming the talk of the town. Mixing a slice of doo-wop with more than a pinch of Brian Wilson, we're the West Coast strokes for lonely stoners and kings of the beach alike. I gotta say, this is a, you got a nice way with words here, dog. There's something rubbing me wrong. Though. Here would be my first thing. Obviously, the big baby blue Chevrolet convertibles being capitalized a little, little weird in the grammar wise. I really like the live shows are quickly becoming a talk of town. Here's what I think I would like to see is like you painted a like, I mean, and actually one thing too, West Coast Strokes, uh, the band is actually The Strokes and that makes it feel like a little awkward. I see, I, I'm missing some of the end. Sorry, guitar lines, rolling rhythm section, epichromatic turns. Honest to God, I pride myself on my vocabulary. I get a little worried, and this isn't another thing for y'all. We all have a tendency to want to tell people we're smart. I mean, I literally made a YouTube channel of it. These are not the time, because if you alienate people and they're like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Nature or the style of an epigram, concise, clever, a pithy saying or remark. Ah, okay. Well, listen, good on you for that. I think you're trying a little too hard with that, that word there. I would try to keep it a little bit more simple. I try to get a little bit more exciting way to do this, but I like 90% of that. I think you're like, I'm basically giving you an A minus on that one. Okay, cool. So let's do Nick Krasinerus. Sorry, I'm, I don't got it today. A romantic ode to missing your true love. Sad yet hopeful you'll both wish upon the same distant star and find your way back to each other's hearts. Nick Krasinerus, Tobin Sprout guy by Virgin Mulchman, Moody indie style merges Orbison with Twin Peaks, while Kate Wakefield's long, beautiful, lush vocals evoke a bedroom pop fever dream, and Mark Patterson's Sun Vault's drums veered to Americana lo-fi beats out 826 with music video, lathe cut 7-inch, and Midwest shows with Sweet Sheeta, US, Europe, and PR. Okay, we got some really good stuff in here, but we can make this better. Rightfully so, and this is coming from the guy who always says, gotta tell stories about your music, gotta tell stories about your music. The Spotify playlist pitch is not the time to do this whole romantic old missing your true love and everything. Let's get people excited. What You know what's exciting? You all have played in some bands that if people know who they are, like I do, uh, I know who Sunvolt, Lung, Tobin, Sprout, and Guy Boy voices are very well. That's going to be really, really exciting to people. 
So like, let's just get that at the top yet again. I think we're bearing the lead and then let's try to find just like a hair more exciting way of saying this. I love the last sentence, except we don't need the out 826 because you actually tell Spotify that in the thing. So I'd say music video, maybe director, doesn't matter if they don't know it. You just put director's name like they're supposed to know it. No one knows director's names. You could literally just make one up half the time and everybody's just going to think you're cool and you're, you know, killing it. Don't fucking matter. Doing that and then getting a little bit more of an exciting uh, way of describing why somebody would relate to the song. I'm like, I think you could use the theme you did here and you'd be in really good shape. Like, I think this is pretty damn solid. Let's get it concise and from the top that you all are veterans and they should care because people care about people being in bands that they used to enjoy. All right, Mikey Mayo, you're a madman and you have my madman respect. Anthony Fantano from the Neil Drop. Mikey Mayo is an unpredictable artist. From creating a post-hardcore song with Lil B to interpolating roller coaster station music into a scene kid hyper pomp anthem, it's pretty hard to put this artist into a box. Unbound by genre, this is truly an artist who does whatever he wants. First off, this lead here, God tier. You ball out of the park to it right away. I think we actually even may have chatted about that at some point. Like that's basically what you're leading everything with for a long time because when you get the God Fantano saying that something that awesome about you well you should lead with that for a long fucking time till something better comes along what i don't love here is we're saying the same thing over and over again about how wild and crazy you are but we're yet again not showing it as much like the little b thing mama mia chef's kiss i want more of that it's like tell me why you're so wild and crazy show me why you're somebody I should be curious about because you've done a great job so far, but you haven't painted the picture to me yet of why Anthony Fantano was that excited to you. If you figure out how to do that a little bit more, we are in a A plus level pitch right there, my guy. Thanks so much for watching.